right, welcome back everyone. We got in, uh, what, yesterday? Yesterday afternoon from our Midwest tour and Brian and I are gonna hit the ground running. We are gonna be sawmilling today. Last week we cut, on our timber frame project, we cut our four corner posts. Today, we're gonna cut our biggest beams. Our big ones are gonna be 16 foot long. And what are they, they're six by tens? Six by tens, right. Six by tens and we have three of them. And we've got a big log over here. We'll go show you that now. All right, so this is our biggest log in the pile we measured I think it was measured about at the at the butt here about 24 inches and I couldn't really tell what it was I took a slab off of here I was hoping it was gonna be red fur but you can smell from the chips and the look of it I think it's a grand fur or a white fur which is fine we just don't have anything big enough in a Douglas fir to get that that six by ten so we will be using this. We'll probably be having a mix of three species in this particular timber frame project. We'll be ponderosa, pondo pine, white fir, and red fir, which is fine. There's a lot of moisture in here, which is what I want. Sometimes when you're doing joinery on a grand fir, it's a little bit brittle. It's structurally a good wood. It's a, it's a, it's a fine. It's just not nice, as nice to work with when it's dry as the dug fir is. But I think that it's going to be just fine. So. I don't even know if the tractor's gonna pick this big monster up. <laughs> what do you think? I think we're gonna buck it. <laughs> cut it to length first. <laughs> cut it to length, okay, let's do that. We'll cut it to length, then we'll take it over and we'll start milling these big beams. So I've shared this with you before. This is a Spencer's logging tape. These are my favorite tapes. I found these years ago when I was doing construction, doing excavating. I didn't know it was a logging tape, but it was the only tape that, that would last when I worked in the mud. They're just so durable. But they originally designed for timber fallers. If you see here, I don't know if that's gonna be in focus or not. Maybe bring it down here, Brian. I've shown this before, but for new subscribers, what they traditionally did is this is a horseshoe, horseshoe nail that's bent in a certain way on the end so that you can take and you can push it into the edge of the log and it holds. And being bent like that gives it a, a place for your thumb to press on there, it doesn't hurt your thumb. So once you stick it in there, it's really a convenient way to, to measure lengths because you can just grab your saw, turn around, walk whatever length you need, and then when you're done, just give it a little tug and it reels up. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful tape, and they're USA made, they're super durable. I think they're the original loggers tape. I think they're made by Spencer Company. Okay, so we have never cut uh, a beam this long, a 16 footer. With the basic mill, uh, you can cut six feet. I think we measured it, it was, Brian, it was like 19 feet Yeah, it was change, 19 and some change, yeah. Uh, which gives you room to park the carriage and still cut a full 16 footer, but it's a little bit cramped and you have to have your log perfectly centered. So we're gonna be adding the extensions on here today. Uh, these are just aluminum extensions that are gonna run it out, looks like another, what is this, five feet or so? 
and it just gives us, it just makes it easier and gives workaround room. I, I love the simplicity of the Australians right here. Everything about this mill, I, I, I just enjoy. It's just so simple, it's not overly complicated. Right there, that's how you put the extension on. Very, very simple. No nonsense. All right, now we can run our carriage. Clear over here. Well, I should have did this before just to have extra room. Now we can cut, I don't know how far big we could cut, but a lot. 16 plus 10. So what can we cut? A 26 footer on this? 24 does it, footer Does that maybe? count the um, carriage? Or is it, say, you know, drop three feet from that? Yeah, probably 23. Up, yeah. Up, it's but still, well it's, over it's 20 feet. at least 22. 22 at least, yeah. All right, so let's talk about workflow a little bit. Okay, so what I, I, I don't know everything about cutting with this mill. I'm kind of learning together. And Brian, you haven't cut with it at all no, yet, right? This you're my learning first time. today. So I'll get you up to speed on it, what I know. But uh, how you, if you're cutting with two men, uh, you cut very different than if you're cutting with one. Um, the, the two men have roles. One is going to be the saw. You're running this, the power head, running the saw. The other is going to be called the bearer, which is going to be off bearing, uh, bearing the bearing the burden of moving the lumber and all the scraps. So Brian's going to act as the bearer at the beginning, and then we'll switch, and then he'll do the saw here once I get him up to speed on this. So how we cut and how we bear is very different. When I'm by myself, I'm cutting, for, if memory serves, I hope I got this right, uh, the taper towards me. And so when I end up, when I'm done with my cut, the carriage is fur, far away from me and I bear out the back. Now when Brian's working with me, we're gonna swap, swap, swap that up and change the taper the other way so that when we're finished cutting, the carriage is back and he'll bear off of the end. That's why we just moved all those logs there. So we don't, haven't really figured out our workflow yet. But I've never cut with two people, but um, we'll, we'll see how it works and kind of how that, uh, how that plays out. Now taper. Taper is really important in these logs because in a perfect world we would have a log that was you know, like the old growth ones. You, know, you could cut like a 32 footer and there'd be like an inch of taper in it. Not so with these. These are mountain logs that were harvested from up on uh, Mount Fuji up there and from the fire. And that's why they have, they have a lot of taper in them because they kind of grow in an austere environment. Um, it forces them, they don't grow stick straight. Um, logs that grow stick straight are usually from kind of a monoculture type of forest where they're competing for the sun and the nutrients that they grow up really fast to try to get up to be the first of the sun. This doesn't happen in the mountains. So even though we have a huge end right here, if we come over here to this other end, we'll see that it's a lot smaller. It's probably six or seven inches smaller. So this is where we have to measure. This is what we get our wood out of, out of the small end. So we'll throw this up on there and, uh, and start running our slabs and see what we end up with. Let's check the moisture in this. So one of the reasons why I'm, I'm okay to use the grand fur on this project is because there is a lot of moisture in the logs. If you come up here close, you, can, you see the, can you see it coming out there, Brian? It's kind of a challenging, but you'll see the, the moisture of the water spraying kind of it gets wet as I chop it right there. Yeah, that was a good one right there. Yeah, there we go. So that's uh, that's going to be good. That'll help us with our joinery. We'll want to get right on that. And then the, these, I think these will work out just fine. Light end. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <Choose> wisely. <laughs> okay, Brian. So two short ones, two long ones. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think that'll work right there. So I got a surprise for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Since we're gonna be timber framing and you don't have a chisel, I got you one. Oh, thank you. Inch oh. and a half. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cody. <laughs> you're, you're, you're welcome. I I couldn't have you doing timber framing without a proper chisel, so. It's the same one as mine. It's been really, really good. Awesome. Oh, that's great. Now you have to make a mallet. Yep. Well, fortunately, I can handle that. I don't know. Is it sharp? It looks like it needs a little work. Yeah. It's got a little thing on the corner. Yeah, it's not bad. But no. Oh, that's awesome. Thank yeah, you're me. welcome. You are welcome. Okay. Well, I got to make a, a 
holster for it too. So I would I love to have one of those. I, I noticed that guys were using they had a, a holster, a hip holster. Mm -hmm. So how was it our friend Paul of Tarsus said it? I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah, it is. It is. Brian and I had a really nice time today, and um, I, I think he's more excited about <laughs> <laughs> about uh, this uh, this upcoming project than I am, but I, I'm plenty excited myself. If you would like to give, if you'd like to have the jo little joy of, of the feeling that it gives, it means to give something, you can give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Now, if not, you don't have to. You can give a thumbs down as well, but uh, uh, if you could comment and thumbs up, uh, we would appreciate that. So um, that's all we got. That's all we have time for today, but uh, we'll pick up where we left off, and um, we'll see you guys on the next video.